y'all, the warfare to get here. Can we talk about it? Okay, because yesterday, all day, I mean, my flesh was acting up and God was crucifying that thing. And then today, maybe an hour before we speak, Avriel gets a notification. And it's attacking our friendship. Yeah. (laughs) The funny thing is, that pushed us into prayer. Yeah. That pushed us into intercession. Yeah. So... The enemy's plans for evil, God is turning around for, for good. good. We're doing an, an uno reverse on the enemy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is take authority over the atmosphere right now yeah. because the enemy knows there is an anointing for friendship. So much we talk about marriage and how to be a good wife and how to be a good daughter of the Lord. But can we talk about what it's like to be a friend? Yeah. There is an anointing on friendships. So, God, we invite you into this space right now. Lord, this session is yours. Lord, your spirit has full reign to move here, oh, God. Lord, I pray that your voice would speak. Lord, may we hear your voice, and may may you bring forth what you want to bring forth with our friendships and with everything that we have going for our relationships, oh, Lord. God, we just pray that you are with us and you go before us in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Father, open up our eyes to see friendship the way that you want us to see it. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, if there is anything blinding our eyes with any perspectives, any broken lenses, I pray, God, right now that you would remove that right now in the name of Jesus so that we can see the people you've put in our lives. And I pray, God, that you would even give us eyes to see the people that have not been sent by you. Open our eyes right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I'm super excited about what we're talking about. Me too. We're talking about overcoming friendship insecurity. Yes. It's such an important topic. Yeah. And it doesn't get talked about enough. But before we jump in, y'all are probably like, who who are you? Yeah. And why should we trust you? Um, So we'll share a little bit about us. Yeah. So my name is Avriel. I'm Amanda. (laughs) We had to practice that part. (laughs) Um, I am a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a content creator. Shout out to my husband. He's the one that's on the keys. <laughs> I have two beautiful kids, Shiloh and Safe, and I just love to show women that you can be all that God's called you to be. So many of us uh, struggle with that and, and don't believe that we can walk in all that God's called us to be, but I love to show women that if I can do it, as Paul says, the chief of all sinners... <laughs> then we all can do it. Amen. My name is Amanda. I've been married for, uh, this year will be my 10 year in June. Yeah. Woo! It's been 10 amazing years. I have two kids. Uh, my son Elijah is seven. My daughter Lily is five. It's been a joy. And yeah, Abe, how, how long have we been friends for now, would you say? Since 2019, so about five years. Five years. Yeah. And how would you say the past five years have been? It has been one of the sweetest friendships I've ever known. God has used Amanda to show me that he actually does care so much about friendship, more than we could even think about. And he's used her to fulfill so many prayers that I prayed as a little girl. I remember desiring friendship so much as a kid and feeling like, why does it feel like I care about this so much more than my friends do? And he really used Amanda in my life to show me that, no, I care about it too. They were just not the right people. And she's fulfilled so many prayers that I knew to pray, but also prayers that I didn't know to pray. So it's been so sweet. What about you? It's, I would say the same for me. I, I would say the same. It's been such a gift for me. And I would say I struggled with friends with women. I was one of those girls I was one of those girls, you know, I was just like, I get along better with guys or whatever. Um, but what I would say is that Abriel taught me how to be a good friend. She has an anointing for friendship and she brings so much joy to my life. And it feels as if I'm never lonely, mm. truly true. I mean, even this morning I was like, man, why hasn't Abe texted me back? I literally texted the group with her husband. Is Abe awake? Because I need to pray with her. I need to talk with her. And um, it's just such a gift to feel that level of companionship with another woman. Um, There are needs that my husband 
is equipped to meet and then their needs that my best friend is equipped to meet and we see for one another yeah. in the spirit it's such a beautiful thing it's so beautiful. but that hasn't come without us having to overcome insecurities like this is it takes work it's it's delightful yep. but it takes work and, and and insecurities have shown up in our friendship and they've shown up because of things that have happened in our past yeah which leads us to the first point, which is in order to overcome friendship insecurities, you first need to acknowledge where they came from. Yeah. Something happened. You're not insecure. You're not dealing with these fears be just because you're a needy, clingy, insecure person. Something happened. I mean, by a show of hands, how many of us can say we've gone through a friendship breakup, friendship trauma, friendship pain by a show of hands? I mean, it's probably about 80% of the room. Yeah. Probably about 80% of the room. And so we need to acknowledge what brought us to that place in the first place. Yeah. And, and really dismantle the shame around it. Yeah. Because it's like there's the, you have to deal with the insecurity that's there, but then you're putting shame on top of it by saying, oh, why do I feel this way? Why am I acting this way? When it's like, no, 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 something happened. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, I know that that's been the case for the both of us. So what have you experienced that has brought up insecurities in, in friendship? Yeah, so I remember when I was about 10 or 11, I was riding around the neighborhood with my best friend at the time. And I was in my obedient era around that age. So my mom said, hey, this is as far as you can go. We had like a little plaza in our neighborhood and I couldn't go further than that. So we're riding around and we're staying within the limits, my mom said, but then another friend from our school came into our neighborhood and said, hey, let's go ride over here. And my best friend came and was like, okay. And they left me and I couldn't go. And I remember at that age, I was so sad. I felt so sad, so rejected. Um, I didn't have the language for that at the time, but it hurt. And I remember coming into the house I was really sad. My mom was like, why do you look like that? And I was like, oh, because she left me. And she said, good friends don't leave you. But even though she had said that, that didn't register here. So ever since then, I dealt with this fear of abandonment. I would see it in so many relationships. I would feel like people are going to leave me. And because they're going to leave me, I need to perform. So I would deal with this performance mentality. Oh, if I could just perform, if I could just perform, they'll stay. And I would still perform and they would abandon me. And that came up so much in our relationship, not because Amanda has ever abandoned me. She's actually always proven the opposite, but it's come up because I have this fear that even Amanda will abandon me. Um, so she's just done so much to combat that. But what about you? Yeah, um, shout out to your mom. Shout out. Shout out to your mom. Yes. yes. Those praying moms, I love it. Praying moms, yeah. I love it. And we're at a place now where it's like, you're like, I'm turning into my mom, you know? It's beautiful. Can it's I actually say something yeah, about go that? go for it, yeah. The other day, I was in the closet, and I'm warring in the spirit. Yes, you know. <laughs> I come out, and Elijah's like, yeah. okay, prayer warrior. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize I was being that loud. And I was like, babe, I, I feel like I'm turning into my mom. And he's like, you know what's funny? I was thinking the same thing. We're, tur <laughs> <laughs> We're turning into our parents. So I just wanted to say that, yeah. We love to see it. Yeah. We love to see it. <laughs> so I would say for me, the pains that have happened in my life that caused insecurity is betrayal. Yeah. So there's just been this pattern in, in my life where I have deeply trusted someone or a group of people and I'm really vulnerable with them. And then it turns out, oh, wow, like this is, you, you, you don't like me. In fact, you're over here talking about me, spreading things about me, and I, I trusted you deeply. Uh, that's happened to me uh, more than once. Yeah. And um, it, it created this fear in me of, can I truly let my guard down, fully be myself? Can I fully trust that I'm not gonna be betrayed again? Um, it, it definitely caused that fear. And also taking up space, uh, like a fear of taking up space. Because 
and there have been relationships in my life, specifically, um, you know, one time whenever I was in college, I joined this sorority, and whenever I joined, uh, the, the pledging process uh, is interesting, but um, whenever I went through it, uh, there are different positions you can take, uh, and based on your personality, based on how you showed up during the process. And so, you know, we had, I had crossed this uh, sorority, and then afterwards, I'm like growing in relationship with the girls, and I'm thinking, oh, everything is going well. Of course, you know, some girls are closer than others, but, you know, I'm growing at my own pace and everything. And uh, the sorority called for uh, a candlelight service. Mm -hmm. And it was my first candlelight service, and a candlelight service is basically where you come and share your heart. So I'm like, okay, great, this is gonna be a heart to heart. And I remember telling my roommate who was in my sorority that morning, I said, oh, I'm just so excited for candlelight service tonight. Mm. And she was like, huh. And I was like, okay, that was interesting, you know, like, okay. And then that night, I, I come in, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and one by one, women start sharing their grievances with me. They start sharing why they don't like me, why I rub them the wrong way. A few of the girls were saying, we thought you wanted to be captain. We thought you wanted to be the leader. There, there was one that, the, that's third in line that's like the, I guess, the sexy one. I was like, I wanted to be the sexy one, okay? <laughs> I don't want to be the leader. But like, everybody thought you wanted to be the leader. And, and it, it broke me because I thought I was just existing and taking up space, and they saw it as, you're too dominant, you're too much, you just want to be the leader. And so it created a fear of taking up space. Mm -hmm. And so in my relationships, I want to be smaller, and I, I, then I get afraid if I am taking up space, did you guys take it the wrong way? Did mm -hmm. I come across a certain way? And just it created just such a fear in me to where I didn't show up fully in my friendships. Yeah. Um, Ava has done such an amazing job to just combat that. Even, even this morning, I was like, did I say something the wrong way? She's like, no, I love that you said it that way. I love that you're going to bat for me. And I'm just like, I love that you know my heart yeah. and you hear my heart and you don't take something the wrong way. Yeah. I love that. Yes. It's a gift. It is a gift. It's a gift. And so That's even so in that, just like Arielle, like that brings about a performance mentality. It's like I'm trying to play the role of a friend sometimes, playing a smaller role, whatever it may be, just so that I'm in good graces, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, but, I mean, the love of God and the love of Ave is breaking that, broken that off. Yeah. It's been beautiful. So good. And it's when you actually show up as your full self. In all of those moments, I'm always so grateful. I'm like, if you came up any less than this, it would have been robbing me of something. But the enemy wants us to succumb to those insecurities because he actually doesn't want us to bless others. Yeah. That's so good, man. Okay, so we've acknowledged this is a safe space. We went first. We shared first, okay? Yes. So we, most of us have these things that have happened to our lives that marked us. It marked what we believe about friendships, what we believe is possible, how we interact. Uh, and so we have to think, how, how do we get past it? And in our experience, and what we, what we believe is that you need to be vulnerable and transparent. Yeah. The way to get ahead of it is to share those parts of you and invite the other person into it. Yeah. Um, so what are some ways that we've been vulnerable and transparent in our friendship? Yeah. Uh, I remember this one time. This was uh, when we were still living in our apartment. So this was like maybe three years ago. And... We were in the living room, and Amanda was going through such a busy season. She had just got a book deal. She was killing it. And her, her attention was needed in so many different areas. So because of that, in that season, we weren't spending as much time together. And I remember feeling that feeling of lack of reciprocity. I remember when I was a kid, that was another insecurity I dealt with, feeling like I was always giving so much more than my friends and they wouldn't reciprocate the same energy that I needed. And that fear started to come up again. And I was like, man, should I tell her? And I ended up telling her, hey, Amanda, I know you're busy. I know you have so much going on. This season, I feel like we haven't been able to just put the time in that we have in the past. And my default was, well, I'll just give more. You know, we're you're in a busy season. I'm not in that much of a busy season, so let me give more. I'm just telling you, hey, this is just 
what I'm, I've been dealing with, but I'm going to give more in the season. And she said, no. Why should you give more? That has always been your default. I'm going to give more. Why should you always come the way of your friends? No, I'm going to come your way. And that was so powerful for me because immediately that broke off that belief. God really used her to show me, no, you don't always have to be doing the work. True friends will reciprocate. True friends will put the energy in. And I really am so glad that you did that in that moment. Yeah. Absolutely. It's such a gift. And uh, last year in 2023, Ava and I kind of walked through a hard season in our friendship. Yeah. What was hard about it was she was walking through probably the hardest. Would you say the hardest? The hardest season I've ever walked through in my life. Yes. Just a very hard season, the hardest. And I was also walking through just complete burnout. I had poured out so much in our personally speaking engagements, just everything. And I felt depleted. And so it was the first season that we had walked through where both of our cups were empty. Because usually it's like, I'm up, I can pour in. She's up, she can pour in. But it was the first time where I was like, oh my gosh, where's this going to come from? Like, where's the overflow going to come from? And we walked through that season. And as we're walking through that season, we're learning to just love one another through a season like this. And towards the end of it, as we were walking out of it, we uh, we met up at a coffee shop. And we were just kind of doing all the final last details of squaring things up before we can move forward and, you know, be 100% again. And there was a a fear that I hadn't shared with her yet. And I had told her I had a fear, but I don't even want to speak this fear because it speaks nothing to your character. I don't even want to plant the thought in your mind because it has nothing to do with your character. But we were sharing vulnerably and she created such a safe space. I was like, okay, this speaks nothing to your character, first and foremost. But the fear that has been coming up in my heart is that you would take a season where we're less connected and while you're with other friends, you're going to share things about me, you know, talk about me and hurt me like the other people have. Turn people against me like the other people have. And I'm like, it's not even in her character, but that was a fear in my heart that the enemy was trying to play on something that happened in the past. And I will never forget how she responded. I will never forget. So, like, I'm sharing this with her, and I'm just like, please don't take this the wrong way because it has nothing to do with your character. And then I told her, and she has this huge grin on her face. She's like, and I'm like, why is she happy? Why is she happy? She's like, I'm so glad you told me that because I have so much evidence to prove that wrong. Yeah. Let me tell you how much I bless you when you're gone. She said, you know, I've gone to this dinner. I went out with this person. And when that's happening, I'm saying things like, oh, Amanda should be here because she has this perspective. She's the missing link. She's blessing me when I'm not there. And so that completely shifted my mind. I had the knowledge that Ariel would never do that because of the track record that she had. But then I had the experiential knowledge. No, when, when we're walking through, you are going to bless me and yes. I am safe. Yeah. And so that completely just broke that fear off of me. And now that fear would never even arise again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's so good. It's so good. And I love that because it's really about how you positioned it. Because it's one thing to share your vulnerability, but it's another thing to share it in a way that sets you up for success. So Amanda was clear, hey, this is not about you. This is about the past trauma, you know? And I don't want to put this on you. And sometimes when we're sharing our vulnerabilities, we'll make it about the other person when it's not about them. So you have to be willing to share it in the right way. And that looks a lot like how Amanda shared it. It looks a lot like how I shared it. Um, because when you're not sharing it well, the other person can get defensive. Absolutely. And, and this is important to remember. Defensiveness is the enemy of vulnerability. Yeah. If somebody else is defensive, what you're, you're trying to invite them into a space to meet you where you need to be met. Yeah. But if you put them on the defense from the front, you're coming from my character. Yeah. Now i got to defend myself. So how you bring it up matters. Yeah. So what are some tips you would say to help us bring up vulnerabilities in a way that lets our guard down and shows it 
we're on the same team. Yeah, I, I think people can sense when there's a tone of accusation in your voice. So, you know, if you're a wife in the room, if you're going to your husband about something and you're like, hey, I wish you could have done this better, there's a way to word it. You can't just come out guns a blazing, okay? Because he's gonna be like, girl, let me tell you about yourself. <laughs> but there's a way to word it when you're gentle and, and kind and loving and you're making it about you and not them. You're not coming with an accusatory tone. You're coming with the tone of, hey, this is what's happened in the past. This is how it's come up in our relationship. How can we get through this together? Because this is the problem, not you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think that um, having a posture of gentleness is everything too. Um, that's one of the things that Ariel has taught me is how to be gentle and how to position things in a gentle way. Yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, I love a good compliment sandwich. Do y'all do y'all know about compliment sandwiches? Okay, <laughs> half y'all do, half y'all don't. So a compliment sandwich is when you bless somebody on the front end, say what you need to say in the middle, and bless them on the back end, okay? <laughs> right, so it's like, Avriel, you're such an incredible friend. Aww, thank you. I love being your best friend. I love that you make me feel safe and um, I'm just even grateful that I feel so safe in this moment to share vulnerabilities with you. You're such a gift to me. One of my fears is, um, you know, I'm afraid that I'm gonna say something wrong yeah. at any given point and I'm afraid to show up fully. And you know what? It's not even because of anything that you've done. You've yeah. only proven that I can show up fully with you. Yeah. And I love that about you. But the enemy has just been attacking me with that. And I wanted to share that with you vulnerably. That's what that can look like. So a nice little compliment sandwich and make it about yourself. I believe that that creates a, like an open door. Because mm. let's be honest, closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. So many of us, we want to have breakthrough in our friendships, but we're holding on to resentment because we don't want to be the first one to share. I'll share if they share, mm -hmm. but can you go first? Can you set a tone and a new standard for your friendship where we talk about these things? Yeah. We get ahead of them. Yeah. Because the enemy can use things that you keep secret in your heart. Yeah. But if it's exposed, that's when it loses its power. Yeah. You get ahead of it. Yeah. And also, this will reveal if your friend can even steward your vulnerabilities. Yeah. How many of us know that you can go to somebody with an issue or a vulnerability and then you end up leaving the conversation feeling worse because they weaponize it against you? Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're you doing this with somebody that is actually trusted and safe. Yes. And a lot of times, you'll know if you share a small little vulnerability with someone, if they can even handle a big one. I love that you said that because a lot of us, we set ourselves up for failure. Yeah. Because somebody has already mishandled your vulnerabilities in the past. And then we go again to them and try to be vulnerable, right? And so that person needs to be tested. Like, I, I would say we both tested one another yeah. in the beginning. And those layers peeled back and peeled back. And that created a space of safety to where we can say, I'm safe here. I know I'm safe here. Um, and so I, I just love that you say that. Um, yes. It's so, 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 so important. And that also leads me to our next point is that you need to be a giver. Yeah. Like, what does being a giver look like? Guys, you have to be willing to go the extra mile. Because if you are not the enemy will. I cannot tell you the amount of times where I've gone to sleep. I'm a dreamer. Are there any other dreamers in the room? That's how the Lord will speak to you. I've gone to sleep and I know we're good. But then I go and I have a dream and it's the enemy showing me something crazy about my friend. Because we know that God will speak to us through dreams, but the enemy will try to use those avenues as well. And if you're not willing to go the extra mile for your friend, then the enemy will do that. I cannot stress that enough. You have to be willing to put in above average work. So many of us have below average friendships because we don't want to put in above average work. Yeah. And for me and Amanda, we don't want anything in our life to be average. Yeah. Yeah. So our friendship doesn't look average yeah. because we put in above average energy. Yeah. So I think that's so important because you have to be willing to put in that time and energy. And a lot of people aren't. And a lot of people think, 
oh, well, that's good if you're, what did you say a couple of uh, days ago or was it a week ago when someone like commented something about us being married or being single? Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we posted a reel and in the reel, we're just talking about things that uh, make our friendship successful and we're doing a little get ready with me. And we had a couple comments that said, oh, it's so sweet that you guys found that as your single women. I'm like, that's interesting. I don't know why you think we're single. And another <laughs> one asked, oh, uh, can you talk about how you made the transition from being single friends to buried as friends? And I'm like, where did I get this idea that we met each other while we were single? Like, we're busy. We had husbands and kids. And I think so many people have this preconceived notion that you can only have a rich female friendship if you're single. Yeah. That's not true. It's not. In fact, like, this is one of the God's greatest gifts to me. And... If I had this mentality of, oh, no, I don't have time for that or that, that's only available to single women, I mean, I'd be missing out. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, 100%. We forged this relationship when we were married. Right. And it's actually been better in my latter years than in my former years. I had tons of friends when I was in high school and university. And actually, shout out to Zemi because me and Zemi have been friends for over 10 years. I don't know where you are, but I love you, girl. And she was one of the good ones that God sent when I got saved. And it's just been so much better in my latter years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I believe so many of us have a taker's mentality. Yeah. I know I used to. I, I used to walk into a room and I'm thinking to myself, why is nobody talking to me? Why is no one inviting me? Why am I not included? Meanwhile, I, I met my husband, and he's like one of the most extroverted extroverts you'll ever meet. <laughs> and I learn about him. Oh, it's not because he's just really interesting. I mean, he's an interesting person, but it's not just because he's very interesting, but he's a giver. He's the one inviting. He's saying, hey, do you want to come over here? Hey, how are you? And including people. When it comes to our friendships, we need to be willing to give first. Yeah. Be a giver. So many times we want people to love us, be permissive towards us, be graceful towards us. But we don't want to give that. In order to, to find good friends, you need to first be a good friend. Yeah. Like so many of us are like, how am I going to find a good friend? Can you be the friend you're looking for? Can you set the tone? Can you set the standard? Because Abe, she actually set a new standard in my life. She set a new standard for, in, in my life for friendships. I would say I was embodying what I was looking for, though. So good. Because when you are setting the standard with your actions, that's when what you're looking for finds you. Yeah. That's when God can trust you to steward it. Because he doesn't want you going around hurting people. Right? Yeah. And so some of us, we need, to, we need to level up how we give in our friendships. And... We're in the kingdom. Our friendships, our relationships should not be looking the same as the world. It should be looking above average. It should be looking like it has oil on it. And that's the truth. It's not enough that you guys are just equally yoked. That is the bare minimum in the kingdom of God. I truly believe that it's supposed to look like us praying together, seeing for each other, inviting each other into certain situations, as long as they're a safe and trusted person and you know that they've been sent by God, just being equally yoked is not enough. Yeah. I believe that it's supposed to be drenched in prayer. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what leads us to our next point, which is you cannot do any of this. You cannot be vulnerable. You cannot be transparent. You cannot dismantle your friend's insecurities. You cannot be a giver. You cannot do any of that if you do not have the power of God. You need the Holy Spirit. Scripture says a threefold cord is not easily broken. You, he needs to be the third man yes. in your relationship. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I've experienced. In our relationship, it has been because of the love of God and the power of God that we're able to operate the way that we operate. Yeah. I mean, when I think back to the hard season we walked through last year, it was, <laughs> I remember going to the Lord, and uh, I, I was asking the Lord, I'm like, God, Am I wrong about something? Am I right about something? Is she wrong about something? Is she right about something? God, I just want to know, what's the truth? What's the truth? And he said, Amanda, you're asking the wrong question. It's not about who's right or wrong. Because if you're asking who's right or wrong, then you're wrong. <laughs> it's about how are, how are you loving? How loving are you being? 
during that time, I was depending on the Lord, and he was showing me how to navigate a tough season. Yeah. And it was my love and, and Ariel's love for me that sustained that relationship. But that was through the power of God. That was through the power of the Holy Spirit. Also, we've had so many spiritual encounters with one another. Yeah. This is not just a regular friendship. Like, I mean... We pray together. I don't even know how often we pray. I don't know how often we pray. We pray so we much. Be <laughs> we, we be praying, okay? Yeah. Um, like, she intercedes for me. I intercede for her. We see in the spirit for one another. We're like, hey, watch out for this. I see this. I see this coming in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, we bring one another into deliverances. Yeah. I mean, she see me in deliverance acting crazy. <laughs> And she still loves me. I mean, we, we bring one another into uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Like, this is a spiritually marked relationship. relationship. Yeah. We think that we can just have any kind of friendship without the power of God. You need the power of God to make it supernatural. Yeah. That is a kingdom friendship. Yeah. Kingdom friendships are going to look different. Yeah. They're going to look different. Yeah. And so we just feel so compelled because I just believe that it's not supposed to be like, oh, look at us. Look at how awesome we are. Look at our amazing friendship. No, no, no. God wants to release something in this room. Yeah. That's why there's been so much warfare against this. There's been so much warfare against this because there's so much power in friendship. Yeah. There's so much power in friendship. So we want to invite you into that space. We want to invite you into a space where you can say, I need to encounter the power of God for my friendships. I need to encounter the power of God for how I'm going to move forward. So I would just ask all of you in this room to close your eyes. I want you to get into a place where it's just you and God, and he's searching your heart. Yes. So some of you who are in this room, this may be you, this may not be you, but if it is, I just want you to respond, okay? There are some of you, there's so much pain, there's so much hurt in your past, that it's hard for you to even believe for what's possible with your friendships. Yeah. You're thinking, God, I, help my unbelief because I can't even see it. There's some of you in this room, you're currently walking through friendship pain. Yeah. You're walking through betrayal. You don't even know how to see properly because it's coming at you at all sides. There's some of you who are in here, you're feeling so lonely and isolated. The enemy wants to attack your mind because he wants you to think that you are unlovable. He wants you to think you're not worthy of a good friendship. You'll always be the outcast. You'll always be the one who nobody wants to be around. There's some of you, there's just shame that has been plaguing you. You feel ashamed. Maybe you made mistakes in the past. Like, man, I, I could have been a good friend, but I messed up. And there's grace for you, too. There's God's power for you, too. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know every single woman. You know every single woman in, this, in their seats. I just ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would do healing. Lord, heal hearts that have been broken. Yes, Lord, Lord, even reveal right now in this moment where there have been past pains. Yes, Lord. Lord Reveal where they have been hurt in the past. And I ask you, God, that you be the great physician. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In this I moment, if, if, this, if that was you, we want to invite you down. Yeah. I want to make that invitation right now. This is not about how you look. This is not about anything else. This is about what you need from the Lord. I believe there's something special right here. So if you need that, if any of those resonated with, or anything that we didn't even mention, this is your opportunity to come down. Come down at the altar, and we want to pray for you. Yes. We want to bless you. Yes. You can go ahead. Father, heal rejection in this room. So many of your daughters have been rejected by people that have mishandled them. I ask you right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would show them that they are not rejected. They are not rejected, but they have been accepted by you. They have been adopted into your family. I pray, God, that you would give them the right eyes to see themselves the way that you see them. Lord, open their eyes, Lord, so that they can see accurately. We bind the accuser right now in the name of Jesus that wants to lie to them. Tell them that they are unworthy. Tell them that they'll never find a friend. Lord, we bind it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, send your angels, Lord God, to heal hearts in this room. 
We cancel every demonic assignment of the enemy on their kingdom relationships, Lord. I ask you, Father, that you would start to send people into their lives, Lord, that would help them to accomplish their kingdom assignment on this earth. Lord, give them eyes to see who is for them and give them eyes to see who has not been sent by you. Father, reveal counterfeits right now. Even now in their minds, Lord, start showing them who is a counterfeit. Start showing them who has not been sent by you. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, that you would just move your healing power throughout this room. Call them and draw them to yourselves, Lord. Lord, right now, we break off that selfish mentality. Lord, any woman in here that are like, oh, I don't need that. I don't need I don't need that. We break it right now in the name of Jesus. We break off the selfish mentality. We break off the woman-hating spirit that says, I'm better friends with men. We break it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, show them that you have people for them in the earth, Lord. We know, God, that when you want to do something, you'll bless them, Lord, through people. So, God, give them eyes to see those people right now in the name of Jesus. We break off the spirit of self-sabotage. We break off the spirit of sabotage, Lord, that wants to sabotage their friendships, Lord. We break it right now, Lord, that where they may not even be able to see, Lord, that sometimes we are the problem. I ask you, God, that you would reveal right now ways where they have been the ones used, Lord, to break those friendships. Reveal it right now in the name of Jesus. Reveal it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God, we ask that your glory would fall in this room. God, this is not any kind of moment. God, we are not going to come here empty. We're not going to leave the same, oh Lord. God, we pray that your glory would fall in this room right now. Holy Spirit, take over, oh God. We're asking for a fresh infilling. We're asking for a fresh anointing. God, I pray that you would break off the chains of shame. Shame, leave right now in the name of Jesus. There are some women in this room, you are just... Uh, weighed down by shame. Shame is like a noose around your neck. I break the noose in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Shame be broken. Shame fall down in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would meet us in this room. Oh Lord, I pray that you would whisper your truth over these women right now. God, I pray that you would call forth deep relationships, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would open up blind eyes, God, to where there's a, a we're not able to see people accurately, Lord. God, I pray that we would be able to see you accurately, oh God. Lord, I pray that your presence would break off the things that have held us back, oh Lord. Lord, we come, we ask that you would bring forth a, a posture of trust in you, God, where we just have fear, anxiety. I speak to that fear and anxiety to where you're saying in your heart, I don't trust you for this, Lord. I don't trust that you could send the people. I don't trust that you can heal this wound. I don't trust that you can reconcile, oh Lord. God, I pray that you would break off anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Fear go in Jesus' name. Fear will bow in the name of Jesus. The scripture says perfect love casts out all fear. God, we come against the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for your strength, a fresh anointing of strength and healing. God, we pray for a spirit of healing right now in this place to go into the deep places, the deep recesses of our mind. The Lord, the, the things that planted seeds in our heart from a young age, oh Lord, that told us we are not worthy, that told us that we will not be worth reciprocating, oh Lord. These things that taught us things about who we are as women, oh Lord, go into the deep recesses and we call forth healing in the name of Jesus. Speak your truth in Jesus' name. God, I pray that your power would be in this place, oh God. Lord, may your strength rise up. May your strength rise up. Lord, I pray for a fresh infilling, a fresh anointing for what you have for us. God, I even speak for reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Lord, there are people who think that you can never there's no way you can reconcile, oh Lord. We call forth reconciliation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we lay ourselves low. Pride go in the name of Jesus. Pride leave in the name of Jesus. That prideful spirit that says, I will not go first. That prideful spirit that
blood says, I will not be the one to lay myself low. Lord, we cast that right now in the name of Jesus. We cast it out. We lay it down at your feet, oh God. Lord, may you reconcile your daughters back to you. Reconcile your daughters to one another. We call forth your strength. We call forth your might. We call forth your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And if you believe that God has done something, go ahead and worship the Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You are good. You are faithful. You are kind. You are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should change your mind. And you have not changed your mind about your daughters, oh God. So God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead and worship the Lord where you're at. I'm just sensing that there's some women in this room that believe that they're small that don't believe that there's, they can walk in the things that God's called them to. I just ask you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would break off that belittling spirit right now. Lord, that spirit that tells them, oh, I can't do that. I can't walk in that. I'm so small. I'll always be last. I'll never be a pioneer. I won't be a trailblazer. Lord, we break that off right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Reveal to them that you've called them. Lord, you, you said in scripture that you've called, greater things will you do than me. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would show them the things that you've called them to and, and give them a right sight to see, Lord, that they will be all that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.